Africa, vast and wild, where animals can still be found roaming free. That's how we like to think of it, and in some parts of the continent, it's still true. But these postcard images are shrinking every day, for Africa has the fastest growing human population in the world, which spells disaster for lives. <laughs> In the last two decades, lion numbers have crashed from about 150,000 to just 20,000. We are losing the wildlife of Africa. We may well lose lions the way we've lost wolves, bears, lions in Europe and North America. Why the dramatic freefall in numbers? Because lions, like all other large carnivores, eat livestock, and people who own livestock get really irritated when their cows and sheep get eaten. Poison is readily available and very effective and very cheap. Uh, in much of Africa, everyone's got an AK-47 these days. We're in Laikipia, northern Kenya, where wildlife biologist Dr Lawrence Frank has formed a unique relationship with farmers like Klaus Mortensen. Oh, way out there. way out there. Yeah. Yeah. there somewhere. We're looking for a lioness called Layla. Trying to pick up a signal from the radio collar she wears around her neck, a device that might just save her life. Anything? Nothing. But in the distance, a young lioness appears, following a herd of buffalo. That is... No, that is definitely not Layla. She's heavy. Slide your, your, there you go. There we go. Yeah, we'll just... Oh, isn't she a beautiful girl? Isn't she great? By fitting oh. lines with radio collars, Lawrence is able to track yeah. them throughout the entire Lycipia district. Slow down. Yep. Pinpointing the lines which kill livestock and sparing the ones that don't. You know, just having one animal in a pride collared means we can see how many are in her pride. We can uh, get an idea of... Where they're, where they're going, where they're spending their time. One of the most important things is we learn how they die. Got a nine for this one? It was a stroke of luck. And in Swahili, the name is Bahati. Bahati. So she's gonna be Bahati. That's nice. Klaus Mortensen Bahati. loves his lines and is desperate to stop the carnage. One night, he lost a whole pride of seven lines. They've obviously been out in the neighbouring areas overnight, picked up poison and they were uh, come back in and they just started dropping like flies. Horrendous. Really, really disgusting. And that, that's a wake up. So the lion is simply a pest? Some people really hate them. The moonlight, especially, they just come, they, they take the, 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 the cows and maybe, mostly the cows and the donkeys and the, and the camels. They don't uh, disturb the, the goats. But they kill your animals? Yeah, they kill. Jeremiah is a Samburu warrior. In some parts of Africa, it's still a rite of passage for young men to kill a lion, even more so when they become livestock killers. How many lions have you killed? In my lifetime, I've only killed two. Only two in my lifetime. And how many animals had they killed of yours? There are so many. They're not waking up sounds, are they, Lawrence? No. <laughs> Those are snoring sounds because she's being held in an awkward angle. The point is that Westerners have a hard time understanding that the rest of the world doesn't share our sentimental attachment to animals. It's completely pointless to go out here and tell these uh, people who are living on their livestock that they should love lions and hyenas and tolerate their losses. They don't understand that. Farming this marginal country is touch and go. Losing livestock to lions just can't be afforded. Well, you know, we've done some experiments yes. where we tried different kinds of solid gates, yes. and they seem to work extremely well for keeping predators out. The whole thrust of Dr. Frank's work is to find ways that people and predators can live together. If they don't, 
the carnage will continue. I'm not staying here, OK? When the trap's set. <laughs> there are signs that more lions have moved into Lawrence's research area. The main way of collaring them is by night trapping. All right, Peter, you want to dig me a hole about, about this big and say eight, ten inches deep? Oh, this is hard work, trying to catch a lion. But Lawrence reckons we've got better than a 50-50 chance of snaring one. When the lion steps here, this spring pulls the cable tight on his foreleg and he's tied to the tree. Doesn't hurt him? Not a bit. This is a remarkably uh, humane way to catch lions. The traps have worked brilliantly. We've caught not one, but two lions. That's a big, big girl. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. Oh, okay. For you, this must be terribly exciting. Well, to get three lions in one day, you know, this is all quite remarkable. You <laughs> brought us amazing luck today. <laughs> but time is short. We have just an hour to fit the collars, take blood samples and basic measurements before these two wake up. Get your finger in her mouth and pull it back like that. Like that. Like that? Like that. Sorry, boss. Thank you. Sorry, it's not, I don't do this every day, you know? No, I know you don't. Lower premolar molar height, 15.9. Invaluable science is being achieved here, but ultimately, it may all mean nothing. A male lion in the wild, like this fella, may live to 10, possibly 12 years of age. A female could make 15. Now, that's if they're very lucky, such as the high death rate amongst lions due to man. But with a drastic problem comes a radical solution. We may need to shoot the lion to save the lion. I personally cannot imagine pulling the trigger on a magnificent animal like that, but there are plenty of people who do and they're willing to pay large money for it. And, and that may be the key to preserving large tracts of wilderness. <laughs> This is confronting stuff. This is trophy hunting. It's brutal and it's lucrative. Clients pay 30 to 40,000 US dollars to go on a lion hunt. What you're witnessing is canned hunting, where lions are released and shot in a confined space. But that's not what's being proposed. Rather, it's tracking and shooting old males and problem lions in the wild sharing the financial spoils with the locals. Here in Lake Hippie, on the commercial ranches, something like 30 or 40 confirmed cattle killing lions are shot every year and left to rot. Those would be worth between half and one million dollars in trophy fees. Think of the number of cattle that would pay for compensation. Think of the amount of education and development we could do in these communities to help them uh, Im improve their lives, perhaps reduce their dependence on livestock if we had that kind of income to pour into the community. Well, you know, a, a, a lion hunt is, 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 is always extremely exciting. And if you are crawling up on a lion, uh, you got your uh, heart right in your ears and it goes kadoom kadoom. Dieter Oxenbein shoots animals for sport and stuffs them for business. He's the largest taxidermist in the world. He shot more lines than he cares to admit and loves the thrill of the kill. I suppose you've got to be a hunter to understand those feelings. They are difficult to to uh, describe. I think you're right. You would have to be a hunter. I'm not a hunter. Yes. 
I can't understand why you'd want to shoot something that's so majestic. You could never defend hunting on, with, on, on moral grounds. But then again, I do not feel guilty as a, as a hunter because my contribution, you know, to conservation is considerable. Kenya banned trophy hunting 27 years ago in order to save wildlife. In those 27 years, we have lost at least 70% of the wildlife simply because they have no value. Outside of parks, wildlife is nearly gone because they are purely a nuisance to the people who live with them. And it has become abundantly clear to all but the most uh, uh, devoted bunny huggers that these animals must pay for themselves. And if that means killing a small proportion of them, that's the way it's going to have to be, or we will lose all of them. I can't see anything more negative than trying to protect an animal by killing it. It doesn't gel with me. Whose lines are those at the end of the day? I don't believe that animals can be bought or sold. Gareth Patterson was a protege of George Adamson of Born Free fame. We first met him shortly after Adamson was murdered by poachers. With Mike Munro's help, Gareth evacuated the last of the Adamson lions to Botswana, where he reintroduced them to the wild. It was a unique experience because I was living in, in the wilds with them. I was a human member of the pride. I, I was part of everything, social interactions, kills, all this sort of stuff. Um, it was amazing, actually, because the lions, despite me being a person, as they developed into wild lions, living a wild life, they still retained their connection with me. But when Batian, the male lion he rescued, was just three years old, he was shot by trophy hunters. It was the same grief that a parent feels, and I don't think there's any deeper grief than a loss of a child, and that's what I felt. The power of the dollar had got your bat in. Yeah, yeah. A legal hunt. You know, policing of what goes on on private land. There's not the, the manpower to control what is going on on private hunting ranches and all this sort of thing. There simply isn't the control. And Batium was a victim of that. I just love them. You can never get tired of looking at them. The big lady, Layla, with the collar on, um, she's responsible for three of the ones here. Looking upon a pride of lions is one of the great sights. More than any other animal, they symbolise the strength of nature. How sad a place, then, would the world be without them? Shooting a few to save the rest sounds like heresy, but sadly, it may be the only way out. A great many conservationists feel some form of trophy hunting is the only way to really preserve wildlife, but do we have the political and social will to regulate it correctly? It's a huge question. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.